It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace powers millions of websites across hundreds of industries for people just like you. Turn your idea into a unique website in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. And listen, there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. See, the thing with some Super Bowl commercials, yep. the, the, the commercials do this thing now where they just try to make like these great ads and then at the end they put the product. Some of it got to make a little more sense. It's like uh, the, um, the Odell Beckham Jr. Um, Eli Manning ad. Oh yeah, that was an ad for sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> it it made, made same-sex relations look great. Nice and manly. That. You know what I mean? They should have had that shit, the whole thing, and at the end, Durex. <laughs> <laughs> KY, Keep lubrication. Yeah. Keep it safe with your favorite target. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I took it as. I no, thought, but what was that for? To this day, I th- is it for the Giants? It said it was a commercial for the NFL. Oh, it was an NFL commercial. It was an NFL commercial. Oh. Hey, not taking yourself too seriously. I love you know the commercial. Saying? I thought it was unbelievable. Being loose. Right. I thought it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> it was adorbs. I thought it was cute. It was, was totes adorbs. It was cute. It was very cute. All My right? favorite commercial. Um, But to the Squarespace, we want you guys to use that shit. No, I want Squarespace to hire the brilliant idiots to do a fucking ad. You know Let what us I mean? do it next I, year. And we can write it. We'll take the WNBA championship. We'll start there. We'll build. <laughs> We're going to build. No, I want to be seen. I'm sorry. Don't waste your seen. money. <laughs> how, how was the uh, flagrant two at the Highline Ballroom? Man, thank you so much to all the assholes that came out. Appreciate you. Um, it was so fun. Chris made a little pop in right there. Kaz was drunk. Shout out to Kaz. Salute to Kaz. Embarrassing yeah. Africans everywhere. Embarrassing Africans everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, it was just so much fun, man, to see people that came out. Thank you, everybody who came from out of town and in town. It was just a great... It was just a great night. I had a great time, man. I had a great time. Well, listen, man, I, I really feel like the 90s, the feel of the 90s may be coming back. Talk to me. Why? Slowly but surely. It's not going to be a sweep of everything because it was never a sweep of everything. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's slowly but surely coming back. And it's taking the OGs who simply just don't give a fuck anymore okay. to bring it back. What what happened? First what of all, it? salute to, uh, what's his name, Daniel Machis? Yeah. Did I pronounce his last name right? I think we're mispronouncing it, but it's the it's the writer of Vulture. He writes at Vulture. He did the Erica Badu interview. Right. He did the Quincy Jones interview for Vulture. By far my two favorite interviews of the year. And everybody gets all caught up in the salaciousness or the little the little uh, 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 captions that they take out of the interview. You know what I mean? But it's a lot of gems that were in the Erica interview, sure. a lot of gems that were in the Quincy Jones interview. But what I love about the Quincy Jones interview is he's 85 years old. Okay. He don't give a fuck. It's the best. He know he about to clock out at any moment, mm-hmm. and he is just out here living his life like his motherfucking golden. The guy even asked him in the interview, he goes, you're 85, do you think about dying? He goes, no. And I like the way he wrote it in print. He put N-O with a period, right? And then he goes, so what, hap- what do you think happens when you die? Because you're gone. <laughs> like, like, isn't that the best answer? Everybody always comes with it. Because I listen to Oprah's Super Soul podcast. Everybody comes with these, you know, long, drawn out, deep philosophical answers. Yeah. We don't know, but we do know. You ain't here. You ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't it just be that simple, man? Possible. And then, during the interview, Quincy starts talking about Marlon Brando. He's giving Marlon Brando his props. Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, yo, Marlon Brando fucked any and Everything. Right. And Marlon Brando would fuck a mailbox. Richard Pryor, James Baldwin, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> so then the interviewer goes, what? He fucked those people? How do you know? He goes, look, man, you like Brazilian music? <laughs> <laughs> Old people don't want to be questioned. <laughs> they said what the fuck they said. <laughs> but the reason I loved the interview and the reason I love the way David interviews it's because I'm kind of like that. Okay. You don't got to press. Yeah, yeah. You got what you need already. Yeah, yeah. What more do you want after that? You want to know how the fuck he yeah. put it in? You want to know what kind of lube he used? Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. TMZ did a follow-up, yeah. and that's what good interviews are supposed to do. Good interviews are supposed to spawn other content for other people. So he was alleging that Marlon Brando was homosexual and, they, and, and fucked. A legend? He was saying he was. That's known, though. That's oh, Marlon Brando was, was, yeah, was, was gay? 
Well, was mean, he gay or bi? He, he had sex with everybody, basically. The thing that caught me about that uh, that whole thing was I was like, oh. I want to know how you fucked so the mailbox. So for people who don't know, <laughs> that, that dude's got girth. Right. <laughs> so the, <laughs> for all you city guys uh, that are listening to the podcast right now, there are mailboxes that are much smaller right. than the ones we put our mail in. But, uh, but Marlon Brando, Brando, for everybody who's listening who doesn't know, was the, was the godfather in The Godfather. I, don't, I still don't know. Uh, who he was, was, to be honest. Oh, you don't know Marlon? I, mean, I Brando? know his name, but I never paid attention. No, to but Marlon the Brando. actor himself, he's, he plays a Michael. Uh, oh, okay. that's Marlon. When Brando. he was younger, though, they showed some pictures when he was young. Oh, stud, stud, ah, biggest, yeah. biggest star by far. In Hollywood. He was massive. Yeah, yeah, he and I think. Oh my God, guys! Michael Jackson paid him crazy money yeah. for acting lessons. Do you not remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yo, hey, yo, no, here we go. No, no, listen, the only Quincy. thing I didn't like about what Quincy Jones said is he said Marlon fucked. Everybody instead of God dick down. Yeah, we're already bombing. You, when you're talking about Richard fucking Pryor, yeah. when you're talking about Marvin Gaye, when you're yeah. talking about James Baldwin, I want to I want to think that they're the power tops and Marlon Brando is <laughs> the soft fucking it's so bottom. Funny, like <laughs> it's so funny, like the levels of acceptance of homosexuality. Like now homosexuality is totally accepted, but we're like, but just be the one fucking. You know what I mean, <laughs> dog? Don't be. Wouldn't you it, rather dog. be a power top? You're just thinking about your son. You're like, I want somebody putting their fingers in my son's mouth, yeah. pulling his head back. You want to be the. You want the. You want him to be the one doing the fucking yeah, man. pound that I mean in certain Arab countries you're not considered gay if you're the if you're top. the top yeah that's not gay only gay is the bottom it's taking it yeah that's interesting I which which that. ones are those I think it might be like Pakistan or like Pac-a-Man uh, Pac-a-Man <laughs> 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 listen, I thought. All right, well, hey, listen, don't take Chris's advice and go out there to I mean, Pakistan and start trying yourself, to fuck dudes. You know, listen, go to the, the inter- bar later that night. The interview was really good. He talks. He talks about Michael Jackson. In yeah, the okay, so there were a few things that happened. He he called out Marlon Brando. Then he said Michael Jackson didn't write his songs. Or no, he said Michael Jackson was a, it was a thief. stealing music. Yeah. yeah, he said he would steal, but he said it in like a. A loving way. And I think we've had this conversation here on the podcast before because I don't know who I was debating with because they was giving Beyonce flack for not writing her stuff and things like that. And I'm like, who writes their stuff? That's what artists do. I'm like, Michael Jackson didn't write all this shit. Yeah. Does that take away from him being the greatest? He, He put his thing on it. Like every song sounds like a Michael song. Gotta and that's deliver, gotta bro. be his that's gotta be his gift. You gotta deliver. Delivery is a gift. Yeah. To be able to to, to deliver those songs the hey, right way is Frank a gift. Sinatra never wrote a song. So is he not a great singer? I mean, Ella Fitzgerald never wrote a song. Is she not a great great singer? And I'm and I'm sure Michael did some writing, but they, yo, what's wrong with getting a little assistance? Like uh, I heard Big Daddy Kane on Drink Chance podcast yeah. with Nori, and Big Daddy Kane was like, yo. Once you become an artist, like yeah. a real live artist, yeah. and this is your job, this is your career, your job is to find the best material. Your job is to create the best songs. Yeah, and yeah, if you yeah. get assistance doing that, cool. Nobody cares about who's the best motherfucker I, and, unless you just broke on the block because that's all you got. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I also think it's because we come from like a rap standard where like in rap, your voice isn't really an instrument. Your brain is the instrument, right? You're put, It's like this poetry, right? You're putting together the words. It used to be. Or used to be, maybe, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. But you're putting together words in a clever way. And even with certain guys like Future, you know, he uses his voice as an instrument. Young yeah, Thug, yeah. they use their voice as an instrument, right? So, but whereas music, the skill is literally singing the word, right? Like, yeah. or, or playing guitar. The skill is literally yeah. how well that you can... I imagine, maybe, maybe it's a little bit different with uh, instruments, I'm not sure. But, so we would allow people with a sensational voice. I don't know if Adele writes her stuff or not. But like the voice is so nice, or Whitney, the voice is so nice. We're like, well, yeah, please sing That's the national it. anthem. Please right. sing. Yes. Your voice is so unique. Yes. We just want to hear that. That's what you do. So it's a different standard with rap. But then yeah. why is it with rap if somebody else writes your raps? We're like, chill, bro. That shit is... I don't know. Because honestly, I don't care about that shit no more. I, I used to. You know what I'm saying? So if you found out, your, you found out Ghostface has someone write his shit, mm-hmm. how would you feel? It's not going to make me stop liking Ghostface. But you're going to try to find out who that guy is. Not really. Just Not like right now, like you know, they, 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 like stuff like that don't bother me no more. Like I was thinking about that last night on the plane. Like I'm like, do I care that Marvin Gaye is gay? I'm like, no, that don't change sexual healing for me. Or let me Marvin Gaye is gay. He added the Marlon e. Brando. <laughs> Quincy said Marvin too. <laughs> Marlon was like, "You should probably add an E to the end of your name, so people don't think you're really gay." Marvin actually no, said that. Marvin happened. actually literally said that. Yeah. That's why he added the E 
to his name. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a a fact. Marvin said he added an E to his name so people wouldn't think he was gay. That is a fact. Wow, smart. That that was a really threw the scent off the gay trail right there. (laughs) Holy shit! Yeah. A, yeah. Really no, no one could possibly put those together with an E at the end of your name. I've been, I've been thinking about this though, like even with stuff like Quincy Jones and even the woman uh, who, who the woman that Tupac allegedly raped and she's doing interviews. Shouldn't death be the statute of limitations? Like no, if we didn't know no. about this shit while they were alive, should people that were shouldn't when they die shouldn't those secrets go to the grave with them? Like, because it does nothing other than for us to have some content to talk about. But it's not like the person's here to defend themselves. It's only one side of the story. What if? What if none no. of this shit is true, and somebody's just doing it for attention? I don't know what attention Quincy Jones would need at eighty-five years old, but yeah, but he'd been carrying that shit for years. You know, every time someone's yeah. talking about Richard Pryor, or Marvin Gaye, he's just sitting there stewing. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. He knew these guys were sucking cocks. He, but Quincy tried to fuck guys too. Tupac always, Tupac said Quincy tried to fuck him. So maybe he was like, yo, I'm not the only one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody he's wants like, to be alone. Exactly. No, man. I'm going to hell in a handbasket. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers going to be with me. I, just, I, I mean, I thought, I thought overall it was a, a, a great interview. I just wonder about stuff like that. And it's funny you say that because Quincy said in the interview, um, he knows too much. Because the guy said something to him like, how do you know this? He goes, I'm Quincy motherfucking Jones. Yeah, All right? Yeah, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. He, goes, I, he, goes, I, he goes, I know too much. And he was yeah. like, what, like what? He's like, I know who killed JFK. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, he broke it down. Who <laughs> is some mobster. Giussani. But that's that's a well-known That's a, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, a, well-known that's a conspiracy, but yeah. The probably idea, true. Probably true. Prob- All right, arguably. But I think the idea behind that, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the mob believed that they elected... They did. Okay, so the mob did us some shady things to elect JFK as president, right? So the mob with the original Russians? Facts. <laughs> Facts. It's Damn. always some Europeans meddling in our elections. The mob won Illinois for JFK because of the mob connections in Chicago and also but, West Virginia. And, when, and they delivered yeah. two states for Kennedy. And then once Kennedy got in power, he was supposed to deliver stuff back to them. He not only didn't deliver stuff back to him, but his brother, RFK, started a commission explicitly to investigate the mob. So they were like, time out. A, you're not delivering what we were promised for getting you the, the presidency, and B, now you're trying to shut us down? It's over. It's a wrap. Damn, you think some JFK- people think the Russians did it. They didn't have to do it. But some people believe the Russians did it. Like- they, the, no, the, the, the belief is two things. JFK sold out the mob after he made a deal with them, yeah. and he also made a deal with the Cubans who were in exile in America to get back, there was a lot of the Bay of Pigs. A lot of about. push to get back Cuba, and yeah. the Bay of Pigs was the invasion where the exiles have been trained in America. We're going to take uh, back Cuba. They got slaughtered. And like at some the pigs. moment when they landed at this, literally the Bay of Pigs, JFK was supposed to call in air cover to support the invasion, and he bailed out at the last minute. Didn't give them air cover. They all got wiped out. Two th- people wanted Cuba flipped. Uh, the anti-communist forces in America, which were significant. Also, you have to remember, Havana was one of the mob's biggest sources of revenue in the 40s and 50s. Mm. The mob really wanted Havana back because that's where all the casinos were. Mm -hmm. If you were a high roller in the 40s and 50s, -hmm. you were going to Havana to spend your money. So the mob's like, fuck, you're coming after us with this commission. You bailed on Cuba. The mob was strong enough to touch the president? No, they didn't touch him. They blew his head out. But, duh. That's what I mean, Chris. Yeah. I mean, touch so, me. How, you, so, how long have you been around black people? I mean, <laughs> God yeah. damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Chris, blew his head out around black people. Gay dick sucks. This is I not. Feel like, <laughs> I feel like touch is like rough up. Let, let your presence no, 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 no. blow your fucking brain. So, they they blew his brain. So here's what I would. The one thing I would say about the mafia killing him is that I think the mafia would like people to believe that they killed him. Hell yeah. What bigger stripe is that? You killed the fucking president? Don't exactly. fuck with the mob. Exactly. So you're not going to say it wasn't us because that you know helps your reputation. Yeah. Fear helps your shit grow. But some people believe that I think it was, it was Russia took him out because of oh, some Cold War shit, right? Like it was literally, it was, hey, I'm going to try to take out this president who because might Oswald go to war with had us. Been, had a mysterious period in his life when he went to Russia, which was very rare at the time. Yeah. Look, it could Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald was, just stayed in Russia yeah. for a few years out of nowhere. And brought yeah. back a Russian wife and spoke fluent Russian. He I mean, was, clearly he was there for the pussy then. And then right. my man got yeah. shot and then my guess sh- gets shot So before you could find any information about him. Remember, the guy yeah. who shot Kennedy in the head yeah. gets shot by some random dude. Lee Harvey Oswald, right? No, no, no. no, no. Lee Harvey shot Oswald. Kennedy Lee and Harvey then another Kennedy. dude 
Shot Lee Harvey. Shot Lee Harvey okay. as he's uh, taking him to jail or some shit, right? Now, remember what he was. It's wild. Yo, the Kennedy he, shit is wild. Was, yo, <laughs> why haven't they done no movies about that shit? They did. They did with Kevin movie. Costner. They did Which the whole one? thing. It was, it's called uh, JFK. They need to do that shit now. But you got to remember Bro. this. Jack Ruby, who killed, he didn't just kill Lee Harvey Oswald. He killed him inside the Dallas police station on live national television. On national TV. Surrounded by guards. Oh, he that walked, was a fucking he son. Walked, he sacrifice. walked so, into the police station. Yeah. The biggest deal in the history of America. Walked right up to the guy who assassinated, allegedly, Kennedy. Shoots him at point blank range, essentially. Did she have it on TV? Yeah. On TV. I never heard this. And... What was his occupation? He ran a mob-controlled bar in Dallas where all the Dallas police officers would come for their free drinks and lap dances. He ran a strip club and a bar in Dallas. Yep. He was mobbed up. What happened to him? He goes to jail afterwards, says that he was set up, that he can tell who was behind him and forced him to doing this. What happens to him? Bye. Bye. So, so Quincy Jones might be right. No, no, Quincy <laughs> He said all of that. Yeah. He said the whole shit about Chicago and Illinois oh, and that yes. shit. But here's the thing. What what my assumption is they killed Lee Harvey Oswald because the American state didn't want its populace to know that a foreign government took out one of our leaders. So it actually looks better for us if some crazy American killed our president than the Russian... Yeah, the same thing Russian now where they don't want to admit that the Russians did meddle in the motherfucking election. Hell yeah. They, well, they finally did yesterday. Finally, well, they, they did. But they said it didn't have any, it didn't have any real impact. My, my feeling is this. Meddling in elections, I know it sounds weird, is what countries should do because the other option is war. Like, meddling in elections is the safe, we don't kill each other yeah. way that, that countries try to manipulate the power dynamic in the world. We do it throughout the world. We do it in Europe. We do it in the Middle, Middle East. East we do it in Russia. We do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need Marlon Brando to be alive and send him over to Russia and Just fuck Just suck some dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Marlon can fuck anything. Shit was safe when the Godfather That's was out it. there when blessing Brando dudes. Brando was out there, Brando keep everything cool, <laughs> calm, and collected. It's the reason motherfucking Kim Jong-un hasn't tried to launch a nuke over here. Number one, he probably still don't have the capability and number two, Dennis Rodman. Yeah, Dennis Rodman's as mouth. As, that, as long as that button, that Dennis Rodman's button mouth is on the West Coast, we're safe. <laughs> All right. Okay. He's not taking out the Mayan jaws. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> but, but did you like the interview? You, you, you had some thoughts, sir. I thought it was great. And I thought the reason it was really, it worked is because this guy, and I, you know, I don't know how to pronounce his name. David Marchese. He has I a think. depth of musical knowledge. So mm. that like when... Oh, you got to respect him when you're talking to him. When Quincy Jones asked him where he's from, he said Toronto. Quincy Jones like referenced a like a famous jazz concert that took place there like in the 50s with like Mingus and all these guys, Dizzy Gillespie. And this dude immediately knew, exactly. knew what it was. Yeah. And then right there you could see Quincy Jones spark and be like, this guy knows his shit. Yep. Then he was talking. I thought the most interesting part was when they talked about Coltrane and the fact that Coltrane would walk around with this book of charts by like a famous, I think, Russian Jewish composer. And it's a very obscure thing. And when he mentioned that, actually, the, the interviewer brought that up and he knew the name of the book. It's like the, th the source of chords or something like that. And the second he said that, Quincy Jones is like, he turned it to a fucking oh, oh, thesaurus dictionary. You know about that. And that's like that. And then now they're talking as peers. They're yes. not. Yeah. It's not. Yes. And once you have somebody and you and he knows that because you gotta love music to know about this shit. Yes. You gotta know. He. This guy is a historian of music and he's a passionate music fan. And so when he sits down with Erica Badu, he might be a Jewish dude from Canada or Quincy Jones. You get past the initial, blah blah. But they're like, all right, I fuck with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because he... There's a level of expertise. He knows. It's not just like what the album is, what rapper is hot. Like, this guy has a breadth of knowledge yep. at his disposal. And I think Quincy Jones is going to talk regardless. But when he really knows that, like, no. You know this shit, not just going back 10 years or 15 years, but <laughs> like... That's, that's a very interesting observation because I, I kind of noticed that, but I didn't. And, and now that you say that, that's why the interview was what it was. Because right. even the Marlon Brando shit started because of music. Right. Because uh, Quincy was naming all of these different musics and he right. was like... Genres. Yeah, and he was like, you know about the cha-cha? Right. Like, Marlon Brando was a great cha-cha player. Right. A tr great cha-cha dancer. Like, he could charm the fuck out of you. And right. he, he fucked everything. Fucked anybody, everything. Fucked the mailbox. Fucked James Baldwin. Right. Like, yeah. it was just a great conversation. And then they went right back to music. Right. And, and the whole gist of the, the interview, if you Sounds actually... Sounds like Quincy got cha-cha'd out of them cheeks. Oh, cha-cha'd... Oh, hey, come on, man. Right. 
Quincy, Marlon no, cracked those cheeks. There's, a, di- there's a different level of freaks, and these yeah, guys yeah, are yeah. on that. Yo, that's that's Quincy what I'm asked out. Tupac for butt. Right. Ass. Ass. <laughs> Walked up on him like he was a hoe and me too him, nigga. He me too. <laughs> he me too Tupac. Like, what's up, nigga? And what Tupac you t- was dating his daughter at the they, time. Dating his daughter. So he heard the good reviews. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll be making my daughter scream and squirt all day and act like I'm not asking for the cheeks. <laughs> Little snicker with all these abs and tattoos. Come on, house. now. Well, and you know Pac didn't wear no shirt around the house. <laughs> no, that's right. He was <laughs> thug lifing around the house. <laughs> you, know, you know Quincy came for it, but the interview was great for anybody in any field because Quincy's main point was y'all motherfuckers ain't focusing on your craft y'all not studying your craft the way you need to okay like y'all like you know how you hear some people talk talk about the new artist and what they don't like about the new artist and it just sounds like a bit old man yeah all quincy was saying is y'all niggas don't know music Hmm. y'all just simply don't know music like y'all don't know how to read musical notes like it was it was just it was it was great but it's also a level past that because i think what he was also saying is there is no shame in being a great artist who borrows Look, there's no greater soloist than Coltrane. Mm -hmm. Coltrane's at the top. And he's saying, look, Coltrane was walking around with this Russian dude's book of chords all day. He said he he carried it so much the pages fell out. Yeah. Coltrane is constantly practicing and learning and studying. It's not, Coltrane didn't just walk into a studio with the sax and start blowing. Like, he tried for all his life to perfect his craft. Michael Jackson. He's like, where? What can I grab from here? Yes. What can I grab from there? Quincy Jones said they said Jimi Hendrix in there. Quincy Jones had a studio session. Jimi Hendrix was afraid to show up because the other jazz musicians that uh, Quincy brought in were like such great musicians that Hendrix was like, I can't fuck with these guys because that's how committed to his craft he was. Wow. He's like, I got to go back and practice and try to get this right before I can get in the room with these guys. Wow. Yeah. Ringo Starr, he was like, Ringo Starr couldn't even do the beat. He I, said the Beatles were trash. Garbage. <laughs> He's like, these guys... Hot take. Garbage. Hot take. He said they were trash. Wait, so the Beatles were... In the were, beginning. He said yeah. in the beginning they were trash. But were the Be- Beatles like mumble rap? Yeah. Were they the mumble rap of the time? No, he was. Yes, he was, Chris. He was kind of comparing it to that because he was just basically saying how they were manufacturing pop stars at the time who didn't even know music. And he kind of likened that to what people are doing with rap now. Well, I mean, nobody would say that the Beatles have a sophisticated musical palette. Right, it's very simple stuff. Their songs. No, they They just had something. They have incredible melody, and they have incredible structure to their songs, and they changed a lot of the ways that pop songs are structured. They were cute. They changed the structure of pop. They were attractive. You gotta give them that. I, the I mean, time, they were we all live in a yellow submarine. That's pretty simple, dog. I don't know. But, I mean, and he said, he was like, Paul McCartney couldn't play bass. He's like, Ringo Starr, great guy, terrible drummer. And he was like, but I had to bring in the guys. So the whole thing. He said, go get, he said, I told him, go get some fucking go Lager some, with lime and a slice get, of pie. Get some fish and chips. Come in some fish and chips. Come back and come in an back. hour, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. And then he said when they came back, they heard the the tape, and he thought it was him. He's like, oh, yeah, that was pretty good. He goes, yeah, it is, because you didn't do it, motherfucker. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh. But they can talk to each other like that because at the end of the day, they're all students of the game. Yes. And that's, I think that's his point is nobody's a student of the game anymore. That's a fact. Everybody wants money. He said that, yeah. too. He said everybody. He said you should never do anything for money. He said as soon as you start chasing the money, and he said, which was an odd combination, he goes, when you start chasing all this Ciroc and Fat Farm shit. And he fat was, Farm. Fat <laughs> Farm, exactly. He was like, when you start Keep chasing the it. money, he said, when you start chasing the money, God leaves the yep. room. Yep. Oh, my God. Bar. Because I truly believe that. I feel anything that you do, you should just strive to be great at yeah, it. Yeah. Like, you're not up on that stage for money. Yeah, trust me. You're not putting out these motherfucking... <laughs> <laughs> you're not putting out these 441 snippets for money. You want to be known as the best motherfucking comedian. Yep, yep. And eventually, it'll turn into dollars. Yeah, That's yep. how I, pro- I always said I want to be the best radio personality on the planet. Now yeah. I just say multimedia. And I you think I don't study the fucking craft. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't think I listen to countless hours of Howard Stern and yep. P.D. Green and Tom Joyner and Doug Bates, all these people who came before me? Of course yeah. I fucking do yeah there's a it's a balance right like I've, i think we've always said on the show and something i've always lived by is like i'll chase greatness and money will follow yes but you can't get good at money you can't get good like at money, money isn't a skill 
Can't get good money. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, if you just run after money, run after money, you're just going to be running after it. It's nothing you can actually grab. But, like, you can get great at radio, and then somebody will go, I would love to pay you a lot of money to do radio. Yeah. Or great at stand-up, and someone would like to pay you a lot of money to do stand-up. I always wondered, like, do you worry when you watch radio guys that they'll influence you? What's wrong with that, though? Influence you in that, like, you'll lose your voice a little bit. Nah, because I'm stealing the good shit from them <laughs> and, 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 and adding it to my repertoire and keeping it the fuck moving. All right? I, I, I can I, ball, I gotta, baby. I got to be know? careful. <laughs> I got to be careful, man. Somebody's like, like but I But you lie. can ball, Andrew. No, I know. I know that's my game, but like, I don't want other things to affect my game. You know what I mean? Listen, like, man, if you pick up a kill a crossover from somebody or uh, a way to deliver a joke better what's wrong with that yeah well i guess for me it's more like i want to be able to deliver my shit in the most unique way like i remember after watching Chappelle, like there's two schools of comedy that i've always admired right there's like the chris rocks and then there's like the Chappelles, right mm -hmm. and i think and patrice o'neill i would f kind of fall under chris rock even though he's more conversational but Chappelle's its own school and like i can watch chris and chris doesn't affect me at all Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm kind of in that school. Right. This mm -hmm. premise out there. Weird premise. Prove it, etc. Yeah. Chappelle is like watching some shit on acid. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a story, but there's a premise weaved into the story. Yeah. And then it's a metaphor. You know what I mean? You don't even know what's going on. And watching that shit. Like I got to I, I love it. I indulge in it. I take it in as much as I can. But then I got to set back away. But doesn't that make you better, though? Because think does. about it like, like it does. It like, pushes like, think me. about how guys like Magic Johnson. Larry Bird revolutionized basketball, and sure. Michael Jordan came, took it to another level. Yep. Yep. So that's a bar. Like, shouldn't you be trying to get to that bar when you when you know you can possibly do something that good? Yeah, shouldn't you? Oh, I, tune I, in? I it means it's. I'm not saying I don't tune in. I tune in. I tune in specifically for Chappelle for like his brain. Like, I want to see how his brain operates. Yeah. But I also got to respect, like, my skills in a game. Like, if it's basketball, you know what I mean? If if I'm a three, if I'm a, like, you know, Steph Curry, no matter how many videos of, you know, Jordan or or uh, Dominique Wilkins he watches, he ain't going to be doing windmills. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, But what he does do really well is shoot off the dribble. Yeah. You know, so, like, he can get everything he can from those guys, but at the end of the day, he's got to find a way to incorporate in what he does at an elite level. He's probably studied the best shooters, though. Oh, absolutely. I mean, his father was an elite shooter. Come Del on, Curry was, Del an was a shooter. beast. Yeah, yeah, probably still shoot better than most of the league. I, you know, That's all I'm saying is, like, like I, I, it's important to know what you do well so you could excel in it, and also important to see these guys, like, a, you know, that do something that is different than you, but then... At least for me, I got to make sure that I'm not trying to do more of that thing that's different. That's not my skill set. But if yeah. it works, oh, if it works, then it is my skill set. You got to look at it like this: like to use the basketball thing. Yeah. 25 years ago, nobody used a crossover. Facts. Literally, yeah. there was no such thing in the NBA as a crossover. Yeah. And then Hardaway came in and started cross, and it blew people's minds. Yeah. But that was his signature move, right? Hardaway was before Iverson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hardaway in like 90, 91 was the first person doing crossovers. And that, no one had seen it. And it was like, you had to figure out what was happening and how do you do that? Is it legal? Was he palming the ball? All that shit. And then Iverson, it, now it's everybody's move. Yeah. It's like, it'd be like, you're not stealing Hardaway shit as much as you're stealing whoever invented the jump shot. Yeah. yeah it's just yeah, a yeah, new yeah. aspect of the game that somebody figured out. Totally. And you know what? Hardaway probably got it from some other kid in Chicago who, for whatever reason, never made it to college. I mean, he probably, you know, I don't know if it just came into his mind one day, but he might have seen somebody do a little cross yeah. on the playground. I guess what I would say is, like, maybe ba basketball is a, a bad metaphor for it because basketball, there's like, there are these moves that we can all do and we should all master. Right. But if you saw someone going up there... Like and 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 talking like Chris Rock, but right. well, I think we should. You know, I, yeah. I, you'd be like, "Yo, where'd you pick that up from?" That's not a crossover. You know what I mean? You're wearing his jersey. But you know, the, the brain is an interesting, interesting tool because the brain never knows what it can do until it sees somebody do it, yeah. doing it. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you are seven feet tall, three hundred pounds. You didn't know you can run the floor and handle the ball until you saw a motherfucking Shaq. That's great. Or you might be seven feet tall and realize, you know what, I don't have to play center. Yeah. I can be a small fucking All these forward. tall guys didn't know they could shoot threes and yeah. dribble until they saw maybe who started, who's the first big to really do that? I mean, Kevin Garnett stretched the floor a little maybe bit. Maybe Dirk. He wasn't shooting threes. Dirk. But Dirk didn't have the athleticism, but yeah. Dirk didn't have the athleticism. That's what I'm saying. Like, your you brain. You got to see it before it happens. Yeah, yeah, you don't realize that you can do something until you see it see it done. I, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm gonna realize, I realize how my brain works too this week. 
if you tell me something I've never heard mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. like an opinion I've never heard before, I don't know how to defend it. I'm like, huh? You'll dismiss it? Not dismiss it. I'm just like, uh, huh? Yeah. Like, for example, talking about Dave Chappelle, Faze on Love was on The Breakfast Club. Yeah, what was it? I, I didn't see it, but I... He said it, Dave Chappelle was not funny. <laughs> he stupid. Said, he said Dave Chappelle was actually whack. He said yeah. the first season of The Chappelle Show was garbage. And listen, art is subjective. But it's not. I, 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 art is subjective. I respect everybody's right to an opinion. I have just have never heard that before. No, that's not Ever. True. No, what's up with these fat pe people in comedy <laughs> complaining? <laughs> you know what I mean? What, no, what is it? Is he? What is it? <laughs> He's manic. What, 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 what is Faison upset about? What deal did he not get? He just said he wasn't funny. He just said Dave wasn't funny. Why? He, his reasoning was he said the first season of Chappelle so wasn't funny. I said you're bugging. Okay, Faison. but besides and then, that, and he said that the second season was funny because of of. Uh, of Charlie Murphy, Charlie Murphy Charlie's writing everything, great. and then he said that niggas don't laugh at Dave Chappelle. I'm like, well, I'm I'm a nigga. Like, <laughs> like Dave Chappelle is funny. Like, I got it. I mean, he didn't really have a reason other than he don't he doesn't think that Dave is funny, which I thought was odd because I've never heard anybody say that. But ironically enough, you know, reading these comments on YouTube and Instagram, it's a lot of people who seem to feel that way, but not enough. To stop whatever Dave Chappelle is doing, clearly. But that's life. Sure. Life is, like I always say, three people going to like it, three people not going to like it, four people going to be on the fence about it. I just personally have never met somebody who don't like Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I don't even, I don't think it's fair. I mean, look, yeah, I don't think. I, mean, I didn't find his, I didn't see either of the specials, but I didn't find that Saturday Night Live appearance funny, I got to be honest. I mean, but wasn't I there a legendary sketch in, or a couple legendary sketches? Uh, in I Center? loved the, the, the sketch he did when he brought back all the recurring characters. That was great. Oh, that's great. Uh, Walking the Walking Dead. Dead shit. Yeah. No, look, I think I think there's certain things that are not uh, subjective, and one is Dave Chappelle being funny. I think Dave Chappelle is a master of stand-up comedy. He's I do one too. Of the, my favorite. Now, there's things that you could criticize Chappelle about. You know, I I on on a. Uh, I think it was flagrant too. We were talking, you know, Dave Chappelle's coming out and he's talking about how Americans are uh, have turned into a bunch of bitch n words, yeah. right? And bitch Nancys, bitch Nancys. That's yes. a better way of saying it. Now, you might you might say he's not the person to be the one that's critical of Americans about that. He's somebody who got triggered by his show and then had to flee to South Africa. That some people might argue is a bitch Nancy thing to do. True, but I still but I still maintain saying, we don't know why Dave left. Of course, and, and yeah, until yeah. he clears that up, we yeah. could be like, yo, that's some bitch Nancy ass shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's I think more of a legit argument. But saying that Dave Chappelle isn't funny is absolutely absurd. And, I, I don't said, even understand. His, his litmus test. I can't was, trust you as as a person who, who understands humor. His litmus test was name something funny from the first season of Chappelle. Which I couldn't do only because they all seem the same to what me. What about the sketch with the uh, the N word family? I don't know what season that was. No, the, the, the white, the black that white supremacist. That was first season. That was that was first season. But I only know that because I googled it after the fact. Yeah, but black white supremacist. First of all, black white supremacist. Here's a better, um, here's a better R. example. R. Kelly P on you was first season. Here's a better example. Uh, is Faze on Love funny? I thought Big Worm was hilarious. All right, but name a single thing that he created. That I don't think he's ever done a stand up. Of course he has, but none of us watch that shit. No, he hasn't done one. I don't think he's done one yet. I don't fuck I don't fucking Point is, point is, I don't know if you're in a position to talk about Dave Chappelle's funny if we can't name a single stand up joke from you. You know, and if the only character we know that you did came out 25 years ago. Yeah, and that's what he was saying. Name one of Dave's stand-up jokes, which at the time... How old is 15, really? Yes, and I didn't think about that till after the fact. Because I was like, Killing Him Softly was hilarious to Come me. Come on, son. The Ja Rule shit. Come on, son. <laughs> like that <laughs> shit. Ja Rule shit is classic. <laughs> what does Ja Rule... Yeah. Think at a time like yeah. this. That shit was funny. The baby on the block. Oh, come on. Tons. I could go over and over and over. I mean, it's absurd. But Faison uh, has a different uh, taste for humor than we do. Did you? Uh, he actually <laughs> said Kevin Hart was funnier than Dave Chappelle. No, he's not. I don't think so. He's a, no, yeah. Kevin Hart <laughs> wouldn't even agree with that. Kevin Hart would not agree. I, well, you know, maybe he would. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think he would, too. Kevin's a realistic person. Kevin Hart, even on his drunkest day after the Eagles won the Super Bowl, would still have the clarity to say there's no way I'm funnier than this. No, nah, I don't think so. Chris Rock is the most confident, cocky person that I've ever had a conversation with in my life. And he says Dave is the funniest. And he says really? Dave is the funniest. See, he funny. says it. I agree. He with says you, it yeah. in front of audiences. Yes. I watched... Chris Rock, think, bring up Dave Chappelle at the Comedy Cellar and say, quote, 
here's the funniest guy in the world. While he's on stage, here's the funniest guy, Dave Chappelle. I will say that I saw both of them last year, their latest stuff. I saw the Total Blackout tour in Dave Chappelle Radio City. Dave was great, phenomenal, but Chris was something else. Chris more scientific. Chris was something else. Chris more robotic about it. It's more mathematical. I'm a Chris, like, philosophy and comedy guy, but... um, Dave is just a language that he speaks. Let's, it's effortless. Let's bring Wax in because yep. he has a good take on this. Okay, Wax. Well. Because <laughs> he was with me at uh, both shows. <laughs> All right, Wax, what's up, bro? Yo. How you man. doing? Peace. What do you think of Yo, Dave Yo, congrats Chappelle? on the farm, by the way. Yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah. Peace. What do you Yo, think Wax, of Dave Chappelle comedy Can I just tell you real quick, um, the video that Wax just, just showed what? just showed me on Instagram, yo. Is that shit still up? What girl? Yo, Wax got so just sent me a fucking... Phone, yo, I haven't spoken to Wax down. in like maybe a couple weeks. I slowed down. How many naked girls he got in his phone? Uh, well, this no is, more. I stopped. This is one. This one. He just goes... Tell you something. What? Oh, fuck. Story's unavailable. He sends me a picture, right? And it's a close-up of a girl. Her head is right over a bathtub. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what's this girl about to wash her hair? What's that this stupid-ass thing? Whatever. It's a video, right? Yeah. It's a close-up. So I click the video to see. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a foot comes from behind her head and pushes her face under the water into the bathtub. The, the, the shot goes out to a wide, right? And it's just some guy screaming in German. I got mad because you stole my move. Listen, th- th- First look. of all, that's my move that you stole from no me. No way. The <laughs> Y'all are bro. not Come competing on. for this move right now in the Me Team Move movement. Move. No, I've been doing this 12 years ago. I was doing it 12 years ago. Bro. I like it. I call it being. Inception. Okay, Yo, my God. you hitting Listen, the girl man. from the back. I used to do it in the sink, though. You hitting the girl from the back. You fill the water up yeah, in the sink. You grab yeah. her head. You dunk it in dunk it. You it pull it back up. From the back. You dunk it in it. I told him that he been doing it ever man, since. I Y'all are gonna move. get me too, man. This yeah, is, I'm not. Cause I'm like married now. Yeah, now. That's how you get married. <laughs> now, <laughs> now what do you think of Dave Chappelle show? Wax? I, I told you, I don't think that either one of them is like him or Chris Rock is like crazy, hilarious, funny to me. Like I laugh their shows. Their shows and every, everything, every like movie they've been on. Yeah, them shits is funny as hell. But them actually, their stand-up, no. Andrew, I laugh with you more than I laughed at their shits. Okay, you know let saying? me let me break it down for you. Wax is high a lot. Hey, that's um, cool. That fucks, mean I'm alive. He fucks about 12 <laughs> girls a guy. month. <laughs> so he's really <laughs> tired <laughs> at night. So the shit he's telling me, I, I watch him. I'm in the show with him. He's sleeping. <laughs> Are you not even paying the fucking attention? How are you talking you about David? Movie. That's why I go to the movies. I, I told him that the other day. I'm like, you were asleep. Yeah. How do you? So you think it's possible that you find them less funny because you're watching them in an arena? Like comedy sucks nah, in an arena. Nah, nah, not it's me, really so. bad. I don't think so because I was with um Donnell. Donnell is funny as hell. But where'd you see him in arena? Yeah, the same oh, really? show. Oh, really? Same show with Dave. Really? Donnell did, yeah. Donnell did kill that night. Donnell's bro. hilarious. Nah, nah. He's yeah, one of the best. I already told y'all who I think the best stand-ups are. Donnell's I don't know. Best, don't best know. stand-ups are Donnell Rollins, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Lil Duvall, and Andrew Schultz. That's a fact. Yeah, I, I what laugh about? at y'all shit, though. You know what I'm saying? And D.L. Hughley. DL's you really, you really like yeah. DL. DL's yeah. a beast, I'm man. Not, I'm not. I've never was into you DL. Like, he's a beast. I gotta give him another shot. Beast. I like. I like Mike Epps too. Funny as hell. Epps is Epps funny. funny as hell. I never like Mike. Yo, Cat like is Michael funny. Cat hey, Williams is funny, man. See, I'm at least I'm be, That's hilarious. I funny. haven't seen his new shit though. And but I love I Mike, think, but I don't like him on stage like that. I think. Well, Mike, I think is like a hilarious guy, and sometimes people who are like so naturally hilarious, it's so effortless to them that on stage their stand up isn't as funny. Yeah, Mike did. When I went to go see Mike, because I introduced Mike a couple times when he used to do his shows here in New York, like yeah. he didn't have a routine. He, he would just kind of be talking shit. Yeah, and it's funny, yeah, but it's not like hell. when you compare it to the great stand up, is an art to me. Yeah, yeah. It's bars. It's bars. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ain't got them bars. You know what it's yeah, like? He's like, been balling. I don't, I don't know enough about Karis One to say this, but like, you know, the guys who are great at freestyling, you yeah. ever notice like their writings are all right? Yeah. Right? No, off the head I, is no, dope. About, I flip it. Off the head is dope. I flip it. Yeah. KRS one, well, and he used to always say this. He used to be like, yo, I hate when people rap, but they do written and call it a freestyle. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if KRS one is sitting here freestyling and he's like, Andrew Head and the army yeah, coat, yeah, yeah. wax with the prayer hand, yeah, this yeah. and that. That's cool. But when you get on here with them bars that you already wrote, yeah, and you should be fire. 
Oh, yeah, he is. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I don't know enough about KRS, but I imagine the guys that are really good and effortless when it comes to the freestyle shit, a lot of times their written bars aren't aren't the best, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. because it's such an easy thing. When it comes to stand-up, at least I've noticed, the people that are just naturally funny when you're hanging around, like Chris Rock... He's not like uh, Mike Epps where you're just like, he just looks funny. Everything he says is kind of funny. His reactions, everything funny. He's funny in the same way he's funny on stage. Yes. You'll say, hey, what do you think about driving without your seatbelt? And he'll li- he'll bring his he'll brain will start to work. Chris ain't going to just say, yeah, well, you, he's yeah, going to yeah. think about and it. And he'll literally <laughs> say some shit like, why can't I kill myself? Yeah. And you'll be like, all right, that's a good point. But, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you got to think about a joke, it's not as funny. I guess, no, I guess <laughs> <laughs> that's just is me. I'm sorry. Now you're talking to somebody sorry, who man. never did no classwork. I ain't got <laughs> He never did classwork. He's got a business degree girls. from Benedict University and I never girl. did a lick of fucking homework. So I Let's ball, keep all this in perspective. Girls, you like right. cartoonish shit. I think that's what it is. I don't know what that means. Car- but, like, yeah. uh, like Cat Williams is cartoonish. But he actually has bars that are hidden inside the cartoon. But if you look at him, he's tiny. He's got the hair. He's got the wild suits. He don't want to think. He don't want to think voice. No, I think it's I'm I like to think. I like Make to think. think. Like that latest Chappelle special. I think I maybe laughed five times in it. But it was the most entertaining that I've ever. Most entertaining special I've ever uh, watched. Come on, of his. Martin. Oh, no, Martin, of, his, so of his. Of oh, his. Oh, oh. Listen. Martin, you so crazy. It was all right. It's but way funny. You just like Melody. Man, you know what he kept saying? We, had, like, we, we yeah. had this discussion the other day. Come Guess what he kept saying? What, what? Crazy, crazy deranged. deranged. <laughs> crazy deranged. <laughs> he don't even know the joke. That's all he knows. Nah, all that's he remember slap. That's that's slap. He liked the melody. Yeah. Yeah. He liked the hook. No, no, yeah. no, no. And I love he Martin. Mad, he got mad funny shit. Mad, Martin shit funny as hell. Martin's back on tour. Listen, uh, it's funny you said that shit about the laughing thing because I thought about this too when I go to stand-up shows. I don't laugh when it's really good. What do you mean? I, no, I'm gonna tell you why. Cause I'm sitting there watching it. I don't like. I don't laugh at every joke. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 taking it all in, and I'm like, oh shit, that was smart. You're you know like, what I mean? why didn't I think of that? Oh, that's a good. Yes. Where is he going with this? Yeah, you're analyzing it. When you're you like bombing, a coach. When you bombing, shit funny. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, we yeah, are yeah, crying yeah, yeah, when somebody yeah, yeah. bombing. Yeah. Like, oh shit, yeah. hold him steady. <laughs> like, when, like, listen, when, listen, when a Yo, comedian first it's like comes a out, boxer. Oh, it's, it's like a boxer man. when their knees are wobbling. Yes, oh, he going down. Yeah, he going down. Yeah, Two more yeah. punches. Yeah. We, we was, Call we, off the fight. We went to go see Amanda Seals the other day at Caroline, <laughs> yeah. and the dude that looked like Kid Fury. Oh, Reg, yeah, 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 yeah. Reg came out there kind of slow. Yeah, we thought he was and slow. And we was like, oh, he, he, he picked it up. He picked it up. He picked it up. I was a catch one. Yeah, but he, he turned it, it around. He definitely turned it around. But I love seeing somebody bomb. There's yeah, nothing funny to me. Oh, I'm cr- if you see me dying laughing at your comedy show, you bomb. I think you, you suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> But only thing I like to do it like that is like porn. Like I, I watch a whole porn and like do a storyline, and then I sit there and, and enjoy. It. Like y'all want to sit there and want a storyline for jokes? No, you gotta do it fast. Like I don't want to turn the porn on and, and they smashing right away. I don't like that type of porn. You like the build up. I like the build up. See, I like the build up in, in comedy. I like the I don't like the build up in porn. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I don't know why that yes, shit makes sense. Do. I get exactly what nah. I do. I, nah. I understand yeah. what the fuck you said. Yeah. Yeah. Because we value thinking, you value fucking. Yeah, I think that's what I want to get right down. to it. <laughs> yeah, you're like that's no, what's important. No, see, to you. no, in porn, I like to see the whole. You know what I'm saying? All the. Do you value thing. creativity in porn? Like when you see a move, you're like, ooh, that's a good one. Nah, I need to I try. I see my move better than that. So he's competing with the guy who fucking porn. Do. Like we're competing with the comedian yeah, on stage. Exactly. <laughs> so porn is your outlet. That's why I sent you that shit yesterday. Like, yo, yeah. this, look at this motherfucker. Yo, I thought you sent it to me on some, this guy's crazy. And I go, no, yo, this is weird. Nah. He goes, that motherfucker stole nah, my he move. He stole my fucking move, man. <laughs> he was tight. He was pissed, All, all the difference is wax will keep his fucking tips I have my Tim's yeah, in the water. In the water? Oh, you got to get those I got Tim's just for that shit. Oh, you got waterproof Tim's? Yeah. That's what's up. Perfect. I got to put the spray on it. Let's pay some bills. put this. <laughs> the ones bill. I'm smashing in the tub with. And come back and talk about Wax's love life. Uh, Audio books are great for helping you be a better you. Whether you want to feel healthier, get motivated, or learn something new, and with an unmatched selection of audio books, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more, today's sponsor Audible has all the audio content you need to start your year on the right foot. Okay, try books like Rich Dad Poor Dad, The Obesity Code. Uh, Van Lathan loves that one. The Four Hour Work Week, <laughs> Our Braving the Wilderness. Okay, whether it's on your phone, through your car, from a tablet, or at home and on Am- or at home on an Amazon Echo, you can get through. Tons of books while doing almost anything. 
It's absolutely true. And uh, auto lets you switch seamlessly between devices, picking up exactly where you left off. I had um, Audible. I had an Audible uh, for a book that I downloaded. It was the uh, girls that I had on the podcast here. Uh, guys We guys Fucked. Guys We Fucked. Yeah, Guys We Fucked. Wait, I, I, listen, I, I listened to their book on Audible. I listened to it, I guess. And, uh, dude, I fuck with Audible. I also fuck with Audible. I know this is weird because my attention span is better for it. Yeah, because we're so used to listening to things. Yes, like, and also you could do it while you drive. You could do it while you're, you know, you're yeah. kind of texting somebody, but you have it on in the background. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's in a lot of ways, I'm listening to books like I listen to a podcast. I think it helps with my memory retention, too, for some reason. You remember more, I actually remember more when I'm reading on a paper because I'm hyper-focused <sighs> on it, thing. but you remember more when you're listening? <laughs> yeah, what do you say? <laughs> if, if I read, I would never... <laughs> Ever <laughs> comprehended ever? I read a hundred times. I need the audible everything. No, you gotta hear what, wax talks and punchlines. <laughs> like all I heard him say was not, not one thing. thing, and I knew exactly what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> when it comes to reading, I don't remember not one Nothing. thing. So wax is gonna be with audible. Audible, all you got day. that? You got to start your thirty day trial. Yes. Your first audio book is free. Go to audible.com slash idiots or text idiots to um, five hundred dash five hundred. That's audible com slash idiots or text idiots to 500 500 for a 30-day trial and your free um and your first audiobook for free so you can do it with audiobooks and um you can do it with audible you know i fuck with audible because they gave me an award oh audible, shit they gave me an award for best self-help book of the year last uh, year so oh, wow salute to audible damn bro yeah that's a real award that's a real goddamn actually award. listen to the bible every night on audible you do? Yeah. Who's the voice? Um, James Earl Jones. White, some white guy, but it's, it's dope. Well, yo, dope. did you know that we have a, a special event coming up this Sunday? Talk to me. I don't know nothing. We got a special event. The Brilliant Idiots is uh, is hosting. We're going to host uh, the USA Network's true crime series, Unsolved, the Murders of Tupac and the Notorious B.I.G. Yes, sir. And we're going to host. It's going to be a live uh, I mean, podcast. Feds going to be there? Fez, some Fez might be there, Yikes. but it's going to be a live podcast slash no we're right. going to screen the first episode and uh, we're also going to have a conversation with the uh, executive producer and director, Anthony Hemingway, and one of the stars of the series, Bokeem Woodbine. The legendary Bokeem hey. motherfucking Woodbine. So it's going to mm -hmm. be Sunday, February 11th, 6.30 p.m. at the sag After Foundation Robin Williams Center in New York, New York. And get this, get this, everybody. It's free. Oh, yep, shit. it's a free event. So you click here to RSVP. Now you can't click here. Obviously, I got to read in the paper like Ron Burgundy. But what you can do is go to either of our Instagrams. Right now, it's in my Insta story. I'll go to Eventbrite or go to Eventbrite and make sure you get that. So it's the Brilliant Idiots. We're hosting the uh, Unsolved: The Murders of Tupac and Notorious B.I.G. for USA. And those tickets are only going to be there while they're there. So yeah. make sure you see us, and we'll see you guys on Sunday at six thirty p.m. Pull up and make us look good. How many people does it hold, Chris? I don't know this particular venue. Uh, SAG after. Yeah. Well, pull up and make us look good, man. No, yeah. it's, you get free tickets? Huh? Yeah, they're free tickets. No, they're giving they're them free. out. This is, a, this is like a promo mm. marketing thing for, for this uh, new oh, series like coming out. Dope. Hot. Right here. Close. Hey, yo, uh, salute to Travis Scott. You well, know, oh, and Kylie. He shot Kylie Jenner's club up. We knew Damn, that already. Smart guy. He did, he did what great, Tiger should have done, but did Smart didn't. guy. You think he'll get the DNA test? Who? Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> You. It's Kylie. You yeah, yeah, you're not cool. Slow down, slow down. You're not cool uh, with somebody else's kid as long as everybody else thinks it's yours. Uh, Why do you care? Let's be sure right now. <laughs> Why would you give a fuck? That's a good question. Will he? Will he one uh, fall victim of the Kardashian curse? Travis, the Kim, mm -hmm. the, uh, no, and I'm gonna tell you why. Name? Tell us. Travis stays out of the fucking way. He does. I don't even think I've seen Travis on a TV show. I'm not saying that he hasn't been. I think, I'm saying I haven't seen no, him. No, I think he shot the club up and that's it. Travis stays out the fucking that's way. Smart. Nobody even knew that he shot the club up. And I'm going to tell you something that we can all learn from the college in a situation. All of these celebrities can hide shit if they want to hide shit. Mm. I, we keep telling y'all, they choose point. to put certain yeah, things out that's there. That's a great point. You think TMZ just randomly know? You think TMZ is such good sleuths? That they just randomly know where everybody is. I know they called me before they asked me for an interview. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. We right. playing that shit. All right, I'll be walking outside. Setting and up then... a shot, baby. You know what I'm saying? Setting up a shot. He, he, he oh, could, hey he there. Huh? He could get child support. I'm sure it's a way to flip the script if he wanted man, to. I get hope out he of here. Do that corny shit, man. Oh, what? Shit. Whatever. Yo, just double check that before we tell him. Nah, it is. You're what? positive. I'm on the way to 
What happened? Oh, they're saying it sold out the event. They unsolved. Joe. Hey, brilliant! Yeah. We still got it out here. We didn't get nominated yeah. for a BT award, but we still got it. Hey. <laughs> All right. Oh, hate to say we fell off, but it's okay. We still hot out here. We selling out a few seconds. Streets. Let's go. All right. We just put that shit up an hour ago. Yeah. God damn it. Golly. Salute to BT, though. Um, were you upset that we didn't get nominated? Um, I- I'll be honest Shut with you. Shut the fuck up. Whose side are you on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like y'all didn't promote it. Yo, I'll be honest with you. In all honesty... Um, no, and it's, but that also comes from, like, my, I, I think award shows in general are, are just st- stupid. I don't need the validation. Yeah, the, the, all I care about are the people. And I, I noticed, I noticed this when I was watching the Oscars and I'm watching the Golden Globes and all these things. Like, I just saw, and I was like, here's a bunch of millionaires, multi-millionaires in a room that aren't happy enough with people loving them and giving them their money and watching the art that they create. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. And they're just sitting there dying to get some stupid fucking golden trophy that is validation from these other people who can't pay their rent, who can't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know the people who pay your rent are the people who come out and see your movies. The people who stand in line, the people who buy advanced screening tickets, the people who support your shows, support the radio, all that kind of shit. So if a fucking... If a, if a Golden Globes or if a B2 Awards or any award show like gives me an award, all right, that's cool. Thanks. It don't mean nothing yeah. compared to the people that come out to my show. Thank you for everybody who came out to my show in L.A. That was fucking amazing. Views from the SIS officially happened. Go to theandrewschultz.com for, for, uh, for tickets. But, like, that means more to me than anything in the world. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yo, so you telling me a girl can't pay your rent? You looking for her for validation? You're absolutely right. I do look yeah, for the validation. Yeah, so one, but I, don't. But I, yeah, I guess you do. But I'll be honest don't. with you. I'll be honest with you. We wouldn't Eagles. care if we nut fast. Well, I still care. Again? You know what? I, I, do, I do care about nut fast. Andrew don't, don't care if he nut fast. Because he just always So you don't fast. care about validation? Yes, I do care does. a little bit come if on, I nut man. fast. Come I'm not going to lie. Nah, nah. I nutted fast. I nutted fast recently. I nutted fast recently. But I blamed her. I was like, well, you didn't make me use a condom. <laughs> Yo, that's not yeah, what I was there right. I said let me use a condom. Right. You know what I mean? But, but yeah. the thing with you, and it's like when you when you're when, when you're somebody people know, right? Mm-hmm. You could have easily just said, "Look, I didn't nut fast. I just hit you with the hezzy. I'll be back in a minute." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll be back. But I won't. I'll give me. I'll be back. I'll be back in 72 hours. <laughs> you know? Three days. Come on now. Three days. I don't need to be fucking all this time. Listen, I really yeah, don't right, care. Right. I, I said the same thing about the Oscars, Grammys, yeah. all that shit. I don't need the validation of anybody. Now, is it cool to be recognized? Yes. Do yeah, I understand why on. these motherfuckers want to be recognized and win? Yes, because it brings more opportunity and more money. Because mm-hmm. it's just something new. Better resume. It's something on your resume. You there know what I'm saying? Yeah. Resume builders, absolutely. And obviously, if you win an Oscar, there's going to be a lot more eyes on you and more people can see your art. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. But these people that go up there, they start crying because a bunch of executives decide that no. they should win an Oscar. They're, they're tear. Oh, no. thank you. The Academy. You cry like that when you see people showing up to your movie? Because that makes me get emotional. Yeah. Like when I see a line outside my show in a city that I that I did not grow up in, yeah. in a city no. that I have no, no roots in, when I see a sold out show, I'm like, yo. Thank you, man. Yes. Like, that shit make me get emotional. Yes. That make yeah. me stay until I shake every single person's hand after the show, take a picture after the single show. I don't see Meryl Streep doing that shit. Which is it's interesting you say that because a lot of these movies, a lot of times that you see win, they don't do great at the box office. Oh, they don't. But they get that goddamn statue, though. And they love that statue. I'd rather get the money at the box office and have people fucking with me and support me because you know what? Black Panther. Give me Black Panther Absolutely. over some random indie. Monique got an Oscar. Hey, hey, well, what has she done since that Oscar? Yeah. You can't just rest she on the Monique laurels show, that goddamn man. She Oscar. She the show, man. That was, I think that was, that was way before You know who Oscar. don't have an Oscar? Oh. Amy Schumer. And she got $13 million from hey. Netflix. So if you got the fucking people, man, there's, and I don't know, I think that's the most beautiful thing. If you got the people, then let's make it happen. But that's why the BET Award hurt just a little bit. Because, because it was voted, <laughs> it was by, voted the by the people. It was voted by the people. Oh, so then, yeah, I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> But I told you, though, yeah. I said on the podcast, I said, y'all don't think we're going to make it. Yeah. Because I was just looking at the... I, listen, I listen to all of those podcasts with, with, with the exception of Two Dope Queens. I don't listen to Two Dope Queens as much as I, I should, but I listen to Joe Budden. I listen to Drink Champs. I mm-hmm. listen to um, Jesus and Mero. I listen to The Read every week. I literally listen to those four every week, and their fan bases are very active. Not saying Brilliant Idiots aren't active. We're just active in different ways. Our people show up to live shows. Mm-hmm. Right. 
that's just the truth to the matter. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, they might not got time to be fucking going online to vote for us for some shit. But as long <laughs> as that shit like that sells out <laughs> on Sunday, I'm cool. Dope, dope. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, no, that's an interesting one. Oh, that kind of hurts that if it, it was all voted by the people. <laughs> <laughs> No, it does. It does hurt. It does hurt a little bit. You know? It does hurt a little. You said bit. we didn't promote. You don't think we promoted? You don't think we promoted? Alex, Alex, you don't think we promoted? Nah, not at all. Not one of you put up a post. I that is a, a fucking post. lie, Alex. I put up. A I post. posted. I did put up a post. I put up a few. Maybe we could have promoted a little bit. In the group chat, you said let's post something. Not posted. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. I did post. No, hold on. I think I posted. Oh, hey, look. It's fuck all it. good, man. Listen, yeah. it's all good. We're going to get what comes to us, and we're going to get what we put in. And I'm very happy with the Brilliant Idiots fan base and what it's, what it's allowed me to do in my career. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm appreciative. And you, you had a hot take on Flagrant too, man, about the fucking Super Bowl. What was that? And then you, uh, your, your whole human sacrifice thing, why the Eagles won. Oh, yeah, the Eagles won because of the human. Well, yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah, I think that there was a lot of sacrifice that, that went into. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about the music take. No, that too. I'm coming to that. I'm oh, gonna, yeah. We're gonna get... <laughs> you bring it all around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said the Prince music take is what? overrated. I said Prince, Prince overrated. Yeah. You like, so you like Prince better than Michael Jackson? No, I, Prince is oh. overrated. Nah, Prince is actually underrated. So here's the thing. But what I ask people on, on Flagrant 2 is, could Prince fuck kids and we still listen to their music? I, I heard you say that. And I'm gonna tell, no, no, no. I don't know. I heard exactly. you say that. No, no, but no, no, Michael, no, 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 no. It's, a, it's another litmus better? test. Who's better? It's not even close. It's, a lit, it's another litmus test. What's that? It's not the pedophilia. What is it? It's gay. <laughs> no, it's I'm gay. telling you. Gay is not can you be fl- No, can you be flamboyantly gay and have... People still accept you and love your music. My father yeah. loved Prince. Yeah. But would call him the F word. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Yeah. So Prince gay? But I don't know. But he's, his actions. Know. like thought, the, me too. Walking thought, around with the is, fucking but, you know the yeah. ass out. And, yeah. 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 He got mad bitches. The perm. Though. Everybody said he got mad chicks. But yeah. it's, 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 can you, it, even Michael. Michael was soft, bro. Yeah. Like they weren't manly men, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. But men love them. Yeah, he made. People can't get. Who's talented enough in this era that's flamboyant and people are like, yeah, I fuck with that shit? Uh, what's his face? Young Thug. Young Thug. Borderline. Borderline, my man, wear a fucking yeah, dress. No, 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 no. I mean, borderline that people fuck with. Him. That people fuck with him. Motherfuckers no, be already okay. to shit on young. Nah, thug. people fuck with him. And I, there were dudes that shit on Jackson Prince. Fuck with him. I think Thug is talented, but not like it's like that. What's that? Migos, you think are soft? Nah, Migos fight Migos everybody. Ain't nah, nah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't. Nah, I Prince and Michael were fighting. Nah. Look, it was all I'm trying to say is that Michael has multiple allegations about touching kids. Yeah. We're not talking about I'm one not time. King go over there. Multiple but I allegations. <laughs> but I'll, but I'll, I will listen to his music. But Yo, King go you're not. Over yeah, there. you're not letting your son go over there. But you're not going to turn off Thriller. That's what I'm saying. You I know smash what I'm saying? Thriller, but King ain't going Son, over there. Son, you will let King listen to Thriller on Halloween. I let kids. kids you know what I mean? You gonna let you gonna let your son listen to a dude that Ooh, diddles the, kids? Who yeah, fucked fuck the Thriller? Up. But what? You fucked the Thriller? Yeah, you timed the door opening. Oh, I fucked it all type you of come music. out the bathroom listen, with the, the ah! whatever, whatever music you listen to. You get a different feeling in your in your body, so you want to listen to all different type of music. Yo, he's a connoisseur with fucking. All I'm trying to say is that's the litmus test. Thriller, look, Thriller might be trash. All right, whatever. But the point is, the litmus test for greatness in music, in my opinion, is not a Grammy. <laughs> it's a kid fucking allegation. That's that's greatness, bro. You brought up a good point on the Instagram. R. Kelly. Yeah. Think I mean, about I mean, it. I mean, I, mean I, I get what you're saying. Woody Allen made such good movies that he's allowed to touch kids. Yeah, I don't even want to just leave it at just R. Kelly the, the touching touch kids allegation. Kids. I think it's any up. serious what? allegation, like... Kobe with the rape charge. Uh, yeah, yeah, but what if Kobe kids. touched kids? He probably could still be like one. Nah, he not in the NBA. He not even in a conversation. He bullshit. He out. He's crazy. Kobe as dropped eighty one and came back and won two finals after that. Yeah. LA would still love him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, sports is a different kind so, of beast, so, man. So nah, only Tom shit. Brady is great enough to, to to kiss a kid and come back. Not right now. He right. did it already. Who did he kissed his son. His son, I didn't like that. Was on, stupid. Man, that was stupid. That was I hated. Nice. Why? Why would he? Why? That was his son. You can't What's kiss your fucking that? son in the mouth. No. No. Why no. not? I'm not doing it. But if he want to do it, why can't you kiss your son? in I'm the mouth? I'm not gonna lie. I kiss my dad. I kiss my dad on the mouth okay. until mad old. And yeah. I was saying this on Flagrant Two Live last night. Like I remember the point in my life where I had to make the decision to stop. 
By the way, that's the only reason I wouldn't kiss my son in the mouth. I'm Why? Because eventually you got to stop. Son, I curved my stop. dad. My dad went in for it and I had to hit him with a cheek. Early. What you Yo, mean? that shit got to be difficult. <laughs> yes. Yo, that shit got to break his heart. Yes. Yes. No, he went in for the like smooch and I was like, like no, I'm sorry. Exactly. Not doing it's exactly. not like that between us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you kiss a dog in the mouth? White people do that shit. I'm not really a big fan of animals. I know that's what I'm saying. So if they kiss the dog in the mouth, they'll kiss the fucking other man in the mouth. I thought that shit was just Tom Brady being so perfect that people got to find something to fuck with him about. No, Who no. gave a fuck that Tom Brady kissed his, his son in the mouth? No, but it, was, it wasn't that he kissed his son in the mouth. It was that he came back for more. So why does his son? Easy, though, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte, you wild, Take it bro. Easy. Come on, you see your son? Kissing, you you know, just said me. you was kissing Hold your on. pops. And I had to stop. I was like, yo, <laughs> chill, dad, chill. But he's still... Like, I know I got nice lips. You know what I mean? Whatever. The kid is four. Yo, you see me Kiss nine, him. What son. To, what you gonna nine? do? See yeah. <laughs> kid had all the button down. He's not walking waddling around in a onesie oh, with a oh, pacifier. Oh, oh. The kid is, is almost double digits. Yo, the kid, the kid is almost double digits. The kid was like, again, dad? You know what I mean? On, man. The kid said that? Nah, nah. Yeah. Was like, nah. <laughs> that's, too, that's too big, yo. Yo, Charlotte, if you see me kiss King, what you gonna do? I'm be happy for you. I'm be no, happy that you're showing. Nah, nah, nah. You, you can kiss your kid. Happy for me then. You can kiss your kid on the mouth. Nah, take it easy. It's just boy. this is what this is exactly what happened. He ki- the son comes. He's getting a massage, right? Son comes over, gives him a kiss, good night, and then and Tom goes, "Hey, that wasn't a very good one." You gotta be kidding me. Where's this at? A commercial? <laughs> nah, it's a, on his Facebook live show. He goes, he goes, that wasn't a very good one. Come back here. Huh? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and confused. I didn't and then the kid, shit. And the I kid comes the back and then and then doesn't give a peck. He like holds it there, son. And then he Did goes. Did he close his eyes? <laughs> Say what? Did you close your eyes when you kissing the man? Wait, what? Well, I think I closed my eyes when I kissed my dad. Right, right, man. Like, what? Why? <laughs> why? All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. What am I going to do? Look my dad in the eyes while we kiss him? It's a man, though. You got to close your eyes. Everybody <laughs> closes their eyes when they kiss, though. Nah, nah, nah. Sometimes I open I my eyes. I think your eyes, eyes automatically close when you kiss. Nah, no, I look at girls. I look at girls. I look at girls. I be looking at shit. I look at them, too. I look for intruders and shit. I be like, yo, what's going on? This looks dumb as fuck. I be like, where the fuck are you at? You look for your homie to tag in. Like, yo, come on, hit it. She ready. She ready. Look at this looks. Look, look. <laughs> you gotta close your eyes. Oh, so, so if you eat the pussy, do your eyes close? I close no, my eyes when I, I eat my, pussy, though. I, it, you better keep them open. Nah, because my eyes are so close, I'm gonna get juices in it. it. Man, do fuck I that. I need to see who's coming. Yeah, but you're going to literally see it if you don't close your fucking eyes. <laughs> Bro, that shit is dangerous, B. How the fuck? She probably like this with the fucking camera. What the fuck is wrong with you closing I your eyes? I open my eyes to look up to see what her face is doing. You uh, know what I'm saying? What you mean? Her what head not all the way back? Looking. Like when I'm eating a pussy, I want to see what the fuck. How you see her face? You look underneath her leg. Oh, well, you, you guys, know what the fuck I'm doing. You guys don't eat pussy from the back. You eat pussy when she's on, on, on her back. I or? eat on her back. Okay, yeah, on my knees. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on your knees. Yeah, because I don't want to be like this with my ass in the air. That shit don't that feel is right. on your knees. I feel like oh, Wallace Brando right. about to come in and motherfucking. <laughs> oh, shit. be like, oh shit. <laughs> Hold we got, on, we what got kind of yoga pose do you eat pussy like? <laughs> You're on your knees. Yeah. Hold on, that's too high. On the bed. That's too high. Down on your knees. Oh, oh so oh, oh, okay, you're okay. you're on the ground. She's on the bed, yeah, so she's exactly, elevated. Exactly. Okay, okay, oh, that's, okay, okay, first of all, okay, I just want to okay, say okay. that's a thirty year old way of eating pussy. Hey, man. When you're hey, young, hey, when you're hey, young, hey, you try to cook your neck like this and shit. You start hurting them jaws. Start hurting them. You got scoliosis. I ain't been down it out long. Jesus Christ. No, no. Now you got to put a couple pillows down or something. I can't be eating pussy just regular one hundred eighty degrees. How long is a good time to eat pussy? Yeah. Until my tongue goes up and down. I give you one <laughs> white. I, just want, I, I want give the, you I want one the record to show like that, that for five Bye-bye. minutes. For five minutes here, Wax just talked about eating pussy, but he always lies and says he doesn't eat pussy. Wax eats pussy. I know he eats pussy. I, I got a picture of him. On. He's lying about this. I got picture. a picture of him. He's Girl sent me a picture, picture 13 years ago. Oh. This we motherfucker. Have camera phones Bullshit. Back then. Big ass shoulders. Yankees hat on. Down lying. there munching. Listen, Paige, can you see when they had camera phones? Munching. It was not no fucking 10 years ago. What do you mean camera phones been out? Munching. The, the Hold fucking, on. The, no, the first phone that came up with the um doesn't matter. The chirp doesn't matter. So you eat pussy. You do eat pussy. I think everybody. I eats try pussy. to, but they don't like it. So I just stay up. You're bad at it. I'm not that good. Bullshit. That is true. Like people you, that you don't know, like you, guys, to, you eating different girls. I like some people like the top, the middle. Some people say put your finger in it. No, that hurts. Oh, girls are it's very tricky with their hey, vagina. What the fuck they they don't even really understand their shit. vaginas. I know it. I know yeah. it works. Yeah, put the meat it? in you. dude. Imagine that. Imagine that, in ladies. Don't put the meat in the girl. <laughs> what the fuck is no, but think about that. You know how some girls like it? They come off the clit. Some girls come off penetration. Yeah. Right? Imagine this is privilege that women don't gotta fucking think about at all. But like, imagine 
you didn't know what made us come when you went to suck our dicks. Imagine some guys only came when you play with our balls. That's why you, mm. That's why it's good sometimes when you don't nut fast. Sometimes it's good to just hold that shit in. Like, you ever seen the R. Kelly tape when R. Kelly was getting head and he just had his arms crossed and he was just looking at the girl like, nah, 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 that ain't it. Mm-mm. How many times you watched this that shit? A lot. That ain't, that, ain't <laughs> that ain't it. That ain't it. Like, sometimes you got to do that shit with a woman to make her feel just a tad bit inferior. Give her a little insecurity complex like she ain't doing the right thing. Who's this? What is that? Some girl on a date with you? Oh, it ain't me. Wow. That's so you. Wow. That is you. Wow. This is absolutely you. I, but can I, can this I see it? This motherfucker be at gourmet <laughs> dinners. <laughs> Yo, can I be at gourmet dinners? This guy's having an Italian but dinner and he's eating it with, with his hands. Don't let him see it. Don't let him see it. How you not gonna let me see me? Let me tell you something about this guy, yeah, Wax, man. Yeah. We've been catching him in some Where real... Where was I at? Soft situations. Real, real compromising Where? positions. Here we go. Here Matter of fact, we are going to debut Wax's hit single on this podcast today. No, no, Wayne, do you have it? No, she no, she don't. What are you talking about? We are going to <laughs> debut <laughs> she she Wax's shit. hit single on this podcast today because I don't know what the fuck Wax has turned into over the past Chill couple out, months. But wild, if you man, thought man. Odell Beckham and Eli was having a good time nah. in that commercial, oh, so Wax down. is out here living so his down. life so like down. it's golden. So what is okay? this? What is this? Wax got a single. Chill out. Called Damn. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That's the name this, of the record. This is sucks. Dwayne, this you sucks. got it? Let Andrew hear it, and then we're gonna add it into the podcast. We can play it because it's original. Hold music. on, I'll put it right up to the, I'll put it right up to the, the, the speaker. This is wax, and he got an album cover. Show me, the, let me see the picture page. What the fuck? Got, is, <laughs> yo, what do y'all got going show on? Show me wax's album cover, <laughs> <laughs> right? Make sure you send it to Alex. Yeah, so we can put all of this in the video. Andrew, did you see it? No. Hold Wanna on. see his album cover? Play the song. Hell, this hell, is hell. wax's hit single. Man, they look big, big as hell. Hey, I want y'all to go listen to the Hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 What's up with this guy, man? What's up with this guy? Look at his album cover. I need y'all all to go to Angela Yee's podcast, The Lip Service. I was on there. That's a sound. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. You in the studio recording the compilation album called Now That's What I Call Gay, Volume 69. (laughs) Okay. Hey. But listen, that might that might make people last longer. Because you know different music makes you last longer. Like if you listen to if you listen to reggae, you last mad long. Long. All right, man. Wax looking out for the fellas. He made a gay song to make y'all laugh. No, longer. no, no, I'm not. Wax, made shit, Wax, was, think, Wax was thinking about y'all meat when he made this record. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> he want to make sure that y'all meat stays hard. No, listen. You don't know. Different songs make different. Yo, can you stop playing that shit? Oh, we're putting this on the podcast. Man, yeah. fuck but listen, that. we're about to play. Listen, Dwayne, man, add this. Stop that shit. It. I want people to be downloading this for shit. Andrew, it. it's done. Man, that nigga dick big as hell. 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 Big as hell. Big as hell. Man, that nigga dick big as hell. Big as hell. Big as hell. Big 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 Honestly, I got, I got no, no joke, bro. No joke, bamboo. no joke for real. This song is so good, you could touch kids, bro. I Listen. really think that's how good this song. You gonna remix it? Yo, I'm a real talk. You I'm are talented, dude. Chill out. You I'm are sending talented. That. Listen, we gonna download this, and I'm sending it to Bobby Lights from Love and Hip Hop. Send it to Elvis. No, no, Bobby Light. <laughs> and after Bobby lays his verse, I'm sending it to Elvis. Oh, it's going Bobby down. Bobby Light is an openly gay rapper from Miami on Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> He is amazing with the bars. Listen, Bobby talks about busting assholes open the way motherfuckers used to talk about popping pussy. 
Oh, it's amazing. You about to have a hit. <laughs> you know, what? This, this is not the way I want to. I want to be known for chickens, bro. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker is trying to get me known for talking about this motherfucker. You chick. said that's you. I, yo, whoa, that's you gotta all to your the voice. Show. You gotta listen to the show. Though. Why are you talking about niggas' dicks? No, listen, because I, I was telling him I don't know how. I don't know what it was a fucking right side. I don't know what the fuck I was saying, but that's crazy. Be <laughs> on that fucking show is kind of crazy. Like hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that nigga the biggest hat. Ooh, ooh, no auto tune. That's all you. Straight vocals, bro. Acapella. Dwayne, I want you to put clues bombs all through this shit. We are debuting. That was the debut of Wax's new single. Oh my god. Simply called Damn. Okay. Kendrick Lamar. When Kendrick Lamar named his album Damn, he had a period. Wax had Damn with a question mark. I know what. I said, listen, I, I told the girls, I said, listen, I don't, I don't be looking at porn talking about, damn, this nigga dick big as hell. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And they grabbed it. You say it now is funny. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is a because bar. Man, I, man, chill out, man. You know, Yo, that shit is a bar, bro. Stop. Something else. Yo. You should not be alone around women. How big is? I'm not even talking crazy. I'm how big is big as hell? How many inches? I don't know. How many inches is big as hell? I don't know the size. Wait, how big would you see if you saw a dick? We were like, wow, that's big as hell. I'm gonna be honest with you. The way that song sound, it don't sound like you was making a generic statement like asking a question. You said that shit. Authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you saw one get yeah, whipped yeah, yeah. out, you was like, "Damn, that nigga dick big as hell." Yo, go look I've at the fucking never... show. You too big for that. Listen, go to You're the You're six foot four, two hundred and sixty pounds. You too shit. big to be asking Yo. about men's meats. No. Yo. She I'm not gonna lie. I really want to see this guy's dick. I don't know who the listen. I don't know the size of. If I see a, you had me, somebody in I mind. I'm not gonna be like who you had in mind. Nah, who you thinking you about, bro? Stop playing. Lexington Steel. What the fuck it look like? Yo, were you thinking about Lex? Mr. Marcus. Who? Uh huh. Who was it? Who? I got know these guys' names. Oh, now you don't know their names. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Okay. I, I know, listen, I know Peter guys, North. I don't know who these fucking guys. Are. Rick. I don't, I don't look at their meets and compare my shit. All to I them. know is, don't you ever, ever, ever question Chris's sexuality again? Yo. Okay, you and Chris smoked the blunt together once, and Chris <laughs> asked you, do you ever think about fucking a man? Yeah. And you got mad at Chris. He's no, you I did say that. You did I told that. him I'm telling everybody. I'm not gonna keep Yo, a secret between Chris, me and him. Did you, did, did, you heard Wax's new single? Did you hear? Make sure single? you listen to this podcast. Oh That's gonna be the name God. of the podcast too. It's gonna be Damn with a question mark. All right. <laughs> 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 the debut of Wax's new single. Yo. All right. Damn, this nigga dick big as hell. I don't know anything anymore, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. Based on love, don't think Dave Chappelle funny. Me neither. Wax, wax dick, don't know wax how big dick dicks niggas, are. Yeah, he don't know how big dick, niggas dicks are. I don't know what's a big dick. We need to see this guy. Okay. All right. What would you say a big dick is? I don't know. I can't tell. The microphone. You. I don't know. Make the sure microphone. You tell you. No, wait, make sure you save that for the remix. I don't know. What's a big dick? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. What's the big dick? I don't. I don't know. What's the big dick? I can't look at somebody I don't know what's like, the big dick. Hey. Like, I don't know what's big, the big bro. dick. Hey. I don't know what's the big dick. Hey. I don't know what's the big dick. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Oof. I'm just saying. I, I, Ow. I know. I know. If, I don't uh. know. I look like my son shit if you're like in your 30s, but I don't know, like. Like, what the fuck? I don't Are you know. Give us more balls, my G. No, Give us no, more no, balls, my G. No, no, Give us more balls. No, no, no. <laughs> He's in a creative zone, so let him go. He's he letting these balls fly. My son is four. He said, he be yo, are same you meat. saying you, you say you know how big baby dicks are? Is that what you bro, said? If you're four, you should have to save me to somebody at 30, bro. Ooh. <laughs> yo, yo. The remix. <laughs> Dick talk. The <laughs> motherfucker. If you're four, wow. you ain't got the same dick as your this. Wax took dick talk to another level today. Bro. All right, man. Listen. Oh, my God, I man. think we can Who's end it on, on that. Drugs. Nah, because we got to support, you know, today's show from Squarespace. Oh, bro. you're right. Uh, listen, support for today's show comes from Squarespace. You ready to start your new business? Make it stand out with Squarespace. Make your blog, portfolio, business, or store stand out with beautiful templates crafted by world-class designers. Squarespace provides you with a comprehensive set of marketing tools to engage with your audience, get found across search engines and social media, and grow your audience. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. But if you do have a question, Squarespace is award-winning 24 7 
24-7 customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, offer code IDIOT. Destiny is calling, and it says you need a new website. Make it today with Squarespace. And then tag us in that shit. I want to see these websites you guys are making on Squarespace. And if it's really nice, if you're really nice with it, I might let you redesign my shit. So, uh, yeah. And this is going up today, so... Damn, this is Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. Damn, yeah. we're recording right now. Y'all getting this fresh, hot off the press. Today's Thursday, boo. Oh, Paige, hush. Paige. Paige had dick You sounded so like you had some dick that was big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You got your calendar all fucked up. You okay over there? Oh, you didn't see Carl here last week? Who? Carl. Was Carl. Damn, is Carl's Carl dick big as hell? Carl big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Call is Charlamagne huge. and Carl? Did Carl play for the Cleveland Browns? What was the position Carl play? Yeah. Carl plays defensive end for the Cleveland Browns. He was here in New York last week. He hung out with us. He's a big motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Big, huge motherfucker. Really? But won't give Paige no dick. Why? <laughs> Yo, you look like Duval. <laughs> I hate when people put this me in pictures like that. This motherfucker looks like Prometheus. And, and be like, he, are you so short? No, he's six foot fucking six. Can, can, you, can you show me that picture he's talking about? Oh, wax. Yo, chill, wax, chill. I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is. Chill, you know exactly who I, it I, is. I probably was out. I probably was just chilling with somebody. You, you know who it is, Wax. I don't know who wax it is. Wax is in love, man. Yo, it's all good, bro. I just want to know who it is. Who you know who it is. is. What's going something? on? Wax is in love. You know how really? I know Wax is in love? Uh, here wax. We, we was in LA this week. All right. <laughs> wax. <laughs> here we go. Wax. Here we go. Wax. <laughs> Quoted uh, a laugh that he that shared with his boo. I was just talking Give me an example. Give me an example. Give me an example. He goes, <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he goes he's really yo, crazy. I talk to such and such about that all the time, man. We laugh like about that. that all the time. I, I was, was just like, saying we laugh about this shit. It's I tapped Paige. I said, Paige, did you hear this shit just now? I can't say shit. He just That's he talked about a laugh. Ever talked about anybody. He shared with a woman to his people. Yo, that's really that gay, bro. <laughs> yo, 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 what are you, yo, coming yo, out the closet or some yo, shit bro, like listen, that, bro? What the fuck that is game? going on? The shit that we was laughing at was funny as hell. We talked about how white people dance. How we dance? Hilarious. Yeah, but your girlfriend is white. What are you talking about my girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, now nah, you don't got no girlfriend. And okay. the person that we were talking about, that we all knew, and was just like, you can't picture her dancing. How do we dance? How do we dance? Because I come from a dance family. Let me see. Let me see. You know how to dance? Well, listen, you put Let on that cha-cha, I can hit you with a Brando. <laughs> listen. All right, so you think that you are Chris... <laughs> Damn, that saying? dude's dick is regular as hell. <laughs> Damn, his dick average as hell. Damn, his dick average as hell. <laughs> we got to go? He got that because right. he saw Amanda Seals' uh, show, and Amanda has this whole routine. About white girls. About white girls. Like, that's yeah. literally how she sets it up. Yeah, Let's yeah, talk yeah. about white girls. Okay. And yeah. it's about how white girls dance. It's actually funny it's as hell. It's funny Yo, as hell. Yo, salute to Amanda Seals. She killed it. I was she shocked. She did. <laughs> really? Me too. Me too. I just didn't know. And I mean, I know Amanda's immensely talented. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Amanda's a super smart. I think that she's a jack of all trades, but stand up is a different beast. Yeah, we they all laugh, know that. She made me laugh like, more than Chris and uh, the Dave. There's nothing that impresses me more. Than a stand-up comedian, yeah, because it's just it's it's difficult. Like I, it's difficult. It's hard to go up there and just have the confidence in yourself. Yeah, you're not relying on nobody else. You're not yeah. relying on no cheap gimmicks, no nothing. It's just yeah. you and your brain connecting with this audience and making them do something that they are expected to do. You know how hard it is to make yeah. somebody do something they're expected to do. I will go there, just not to laugh. Yeah, I, go, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I thought it was gonna be whack. She was it's good. great. I really? laughed the whole really? time, That's maybe good. for a whole hour. Good, Listen, good. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. Good, good, good. Like, she got a solid hour. Yeah. Like, it's oh, hard. It's, it's, it's hard. And she was cocky with it. Interesting. She was towards the end, and the light came on, and she goes, that light's on. So that means that I can either give you five minutes or 15. What y'all want? And she was killing. Everybody like, 15. Yeah. She was like, okay, well, let's talk about white girls. It's just, it's, it's smart. It's socially conscious. It's funny. You know, she represents for the women. It was really good. And I and I mean, I, I you know, I'm a, I feel like I'm a stand-up connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. wasn't expecting that at all. You weren't expecting all. much. That, that, that's, I don't that's know what I, I was expecting. That's why Dave and Chris to stay on the movies and y'all don't have to do stand-up. You wilding with Dave and Chris. Nah, 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 yeah, yeah, you wilding with that. No, right. I'm not. You wilding. I think if you could pay attention to what they're saying, you might like Word it more. Probably right. what it is. That's what it is, yeah. You know, I should look at listen to them in audio. 
Huh? Yeah. Audible. Listen. Get that audible. Uh, yeah. Speaking of audio, drop that hit single one more time for me, Dwayne. Hey, Damn, that nigga out, take big as hell. Hey, Damn. We're going to end on that note. Wax is new single. We make it available for download next week. It'll be 69 cents. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If oh, yeah. you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. It's us.